Yo, what is up guys? My name is Voss, and today will be a video explaining the Icebreaker update, what all I included, and so far what I could find. Now, the patch modes, or what they released on this update, were very minimal. Um, they didn't really talk about a lot of what they changed. They uh, they talked about the uh, the missions, where the, uh, the new mission called Icebreaker. Uh, the achievements, the new rank, um, some skins, uh, some new guns that were coming. And that was really about it. And some achievements. So, more or less, I have a whole list of things that I discovered personally that they changed. And that actually will affect the gameplay a lot. Now, I can't say that this is everything, but this is what I could find in the short time that I've been playing today. Alright, so starting off with the new mission they added called Icebreaker. Now, it's a four-act mission. And it usually takes between... 25 to 30 minutes or maybe a little bit less than 25 and it comes in three difficulties easy normal and insane uh, the easy difficulty seems to be pretty easy the other uh, normal or I uh, know it's hard hard seems to be you know okay it's not too bad um, insane is insane um, insane is a very 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 hard one to complete all right so on this mission you'll see a missile ship which is a new you could say boss to an extent and it's an enemy vessel that attacks the area and it can be destroyed with the homing RPGs another feature that they added uh, they added a centipede turret so you know the other uh, turrets they added in Earthshaker well they added a new one called the centipede and it's almost like the Hornets but fully auto and they're more close range and they don't do as much damage as the Hornets and they also added the M2, M2 MK2 helicopter, which is like the Osprey that they use in the US military. They added the Elite Sniper, which uh, can knock down a target when it when it's hit. So like let's say you know the normal snipers, they'll they'll kill you pretty fast. These if they shoot you, they can knock you down. And they also added an operative called the Enforcer, and it's a black red troop armed with a pistol and an ice pick. Works best at close range. So they do a ton of damage, like the melee the melee troops that you would see in Tower Raid or um, some other missions that they released. And also there's minefields, and those are extremely hard to get through. Those are some of the ones that I've had the worst trouble with. Alright, but taking a look at Act 1, it seems you're just fighting through a canyon until you get to, uh, to fight a helicopter. Now, in Act 2, it's a two-part act, and it gets a little bit more complicated. You fight down in a missile silo, where they're trying to launch a mission or launch a missile um, that's an actual Warface missile. So Blackwood has hacked into the system and is going to launch this missile to frame this attack as if Warface team did it. And the second is you're just fighting around a minefield and you're uh, you're getting to an extraction point. And then Act Three, you're you're doing kind of the same thing. You're fighting more out in the open. Um, you're fighting lots and lots of turrets, things like that. And then Act 4 is where you actually fight the ship, and you have three vessels, or like three destroyed uh, vessels that you get RPGs from, and you have to shoot the uh, the cannons off the ship, and they have a lot of damage. And they give a lot of damage, and they take a lot of damage, so it can take a little bit longer than most missions. So one thing I've definitely been frustrated with my com about is they're, they're, very, they're very vague with what they do with the game. Uh, so far at least, and what they've been adding into the game, as I stated before. So I had to kind of go scout through and find the achievements that I could, you know, actually find the specifications to on what did you need, what you need to do to, you know, to complete them and uh, to achieve them. So I'm going to try to go through the ones that I could find. So first off, we have the complete icebreaker mission on a regular difficulty. So this one looks kind of nice, it's just a mountain, nothing special. So the next one is all the way down here, and they're kind of hidden because, you know, obviously I haven't completed any part of them. Uh, they're hidden down here somewhere, though. I'm not sure exactly. So the other one I found was, for marks at least, kill 5,000 enemies with a secondary and icebreaker, uh, secondary icebreaker weapon. So this will be the Sig uh, P22, P226, and it seems to be a hand, like a Bigfoot or like a Yeti hand. Um, behind some ice so I mean I guess it looks cool all right so moving over here to badges uh, these are kind of more centralized so I can kind of go through these faster 
Um, this one is kill to kill 1,000 enemies with a melee icebreaker weapon. So the uh, the icebreaker uh, tactical axe. This one is complete icebreaker mission on skilled difficulty. Shouldn't be too hard. This one looks kind of neat. And this one is complete icebreaker hardcore without being killed. Now that one sounds extremely hard. So that would definitely be one, you know, for a trophy. So moving over here to stripes. Let's see what we can find. Um, so kind of when they did this with Earthshaker and they did this with uh, with Zenith and Marathon, it is kind of the same thing for Icebreaker. So they did all the classes for completing it in a hardcore as a rifleman, sniper, medic, engineer, you know, that whole deal. And then they did one for complete icebreaker hardcore ten times. So that one is going to be pretty hard to get, and it seems to be an Osprey or uh, the helicopters that they added uh, in flames. So that would be pretty neat to get. So it also seems that they added a new rank. Now this would be expected because they always adding more ranks so people will buy more boosters and people will spend more money. But this one may be killing it. Uh, this one may be a little too far from what it's describing. You know, I could not be looking at the statistics right. But this would be a very, very hard one to achieve. It's called rank Apache or uh, Apache Warrior and it's rank 81. Now, the uh, the exact experience amount that you need to achieve this rank is somewhere, but uh, I can't seem to find it. But what it says on the uh, the actual notes about the rank is that it'll take, without boosters, 40,000 hangar victories, or 2,500 successful missions of Anubis on the pro difficulty. So just from the sounds of it, that's pretty insane. Now, what they're trying to convey to you right now is that buy Mega VIP so you can rank up two times as fast. But it may be something to look forward to if you're definitely into PvE or you like farming, you like golden ranks, because this one does look pretty sweet. Alright, so they also added Icebreaker skins. Now, these skins look amazing, and as you can see in the, uh, the Icebreaker playthrough and the little free-for-all clip in the beginning of this video, I have the uh, Frozen Firearm ATF-12, and I have it permanent. And their credit boxes, they're 60 credits per box, and they look really, really sweet. They have them for the R16, the uh, Firearm, uh, ATF-12, the Frozen SEA Scout, Frozen Honey Badger, Frozen AY-2226, 226, and then the, the Frozen Tactical Axe. Uh, all the skins look pretty incredible, honestly. I would love to be able to see the Scout. Um, I'm sure the Honey Badger would look sick. Um, and they are 16. And maybe, you know, the Tactical Axe, but I'm not too much into melee weapons. I, uh, I like my old Tanto. But, um, it's definitely something to look forward to unboxing if you love those skins. They also added two new weapons to the game. Or one will be added soon. Now, these two weapons, one of them is going to be a major issue just I'll get to that in a minute the other one is going to be is actually an interesting concept um, they added a legendary level now to your uh, your vendors so now even people that have max vendor points for years or uh, probably about a year now now they can unlock another gun and I'm currently maybe 20% into it right now but um the vendor gun is the PEG or PEG HGC Custom. The damage is around 660, the range is 5, the RPM is 175, the aim accuracy is 72, hip accuracy is 50, and clip size is 12. So what this seems to me is that this is a Viper buffed with a special silencer. So, and in semi-auto, so less RPM, kind of almost half the RPM. So this is a very, very neat shotgun, and I'm glad they're starting to do this, and I'm glad they're introducing this concept of expanding the vendors, because really there's not a lot of options in the vendors. A lot of the guns in the vendors cannot compete with anything else. So this adds, you know, a 100% non-pay-to-win option, apart from, you know, random boxes, which can, in some terms, be pay-to-win, because of the randomness of the box. Thus, random boxes. Also, they are adding the Golden or Normal R14 Crazy Horse. A very, very interesting name for a gun, but I could say that it will definitely describe it properly. 
Um, this gun reminds me of the RK-14 already added, but again, on steroids. This gun has 350 damage, range of, one, of 75, RPM of 145, aim accuracy of 104, hip accuracy of 40, and clip size of 10. So just to give you a comparison, if we go here and look at one of the best assault or sniper rifles in the game currently, which will be maybe the TWM X308 being a decent comparison. It has 350 damage, range of 80, RPM of 49, aim accuracy of 104, hip accuracy of 45, and clip size of 10. So it's the TWM X308 that really doesn't get knockdowns because semi-auto snipers usually don't have the ability to unless it's like the RBA and maybe it has a little bit less range but that's the standard range for any sniper rifle so this gun is going to be absolutely incredible you know this gun may not be as good as the BT-50 which has been the reigning supreme lord of you know everything as far as sniper rifles and the kks &R, but you know we don't right now we don't know because we haven't had it now it says a lot of people are wondering you know where, where's the where's the uh, crazy horse where's crazy horse now personally i've been farming for it also because i want to have it just in case we uh we had in tour cap to do clan wars against people that love using it depending on how overpowered it is well it says that it will be in for a short period of time during the special event so that means that it could come any time it seems there's no specific time so there's also a gold variant, which would be pretty interesting. This is definitely something to watch out for out there in the pub games. Now back to what I was talking about, about unannounced, unannounced things. They instituted some sound changes for certain weapons. Now I could have missed a few weapons, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. But it seems that they have changed the sound of the FI-103, which you'll hear now. The A through 210, which you'll hear now. The GU2. The GU1. And the AY551. Now, for example, the other variant of the AY551, the SMG variant, which would be called the AY552, the, the sound on that weapon is not changed at all. Now, I don't understand why specifically they changed these specific sound effects for the firing of the weapon and also the reload animation. Because personally, I feel, for example, the FI-103 has an amazing sound. I don't understand why they would change that. I feel that other weapons have a bit of an unrealistic sound that they could have changed first. But they do what they do, and we can't help it, really. Now, another thing that they did that they didn't talk about was weapon changes in the functionality of some weapons. Now, there were some hints to that and some rumors of what would be going on. People saying that some of the most favoritized weapons or some of the most commonly used weapons would now become trash, and some of the worst would become better. Now, I haven't gone through and compared stats to every single one of the weapons because I just simply don't have time for that right now. But so far what I did find that are some obvious ones is the FY47 recoil. It is dramatically increased. The weapon before used to be mildly usable, but now it's just out of this world. Strafing is not even possibility. Now, another thing is the Reddick spray, so in full automatic fire, may have been reduced. Now I'm not 100% sure if this is true or not because I personally don't have any recordings of me with a Reddick shooting at a wall, but I think it may be reduced so the spread doesn't go out of control, you know, as soon as it did. So I'm interested to see if that they make a comment on that and if that is actually a thing that they did. So as I was saying about features that they did not talk about in the update notes, they did more, they added more features. 
and one of them or a few of them I have listed here now I will say again that I do not have everything in the update listed in this video um, I do not have the time to go through on every single little aspect because when it's such a broad game it's hard to pinpoint everything I just found what I could find in just a day of playing alright so some of the features they have added are the steam overlay so the steam overlay is back if you're launching through steam the headshot notification in safe house is restored so if you shoot a target in the head in the safe house it'll actually show the points and then the the headshot notification and there's also something called a jump kill added it's like a it's like a icon in the kill feed so when you jump and kill somebody you get a special little icon in the kill feed also the rank icons have seemed to be mixed um, previously I was ranked 74 with the viper or the uh, the snake um, icon and now I am the bull so I don't know exactly why they changed this or if this was a mess up but um it is what it is. The rank icon details have also changed. So if you go into game and you go look at your friends list, you may see something a little irregular. And it's because the detail of the ranks seem to be dramatically reduced and sharpened. So they look a little bit abnormal and they just don't look, you know, they don't, they don't look in place in your overlay or not in your, in your, um, in your HUD or your main menu. Some other things that I noticed, some glitches, were that just just random teleportations, that just awkwardness, you know, like stuff that I haven't seen before, because I've been playing this game consistently since the migration. And also, in some game modes for at random times, you can actually vote kick people from the other team without explanation. Alright, anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit from this video, and I hope you got to take away from what they did with the game in this Icebreaker update. I'm going to be releasing a Warface Conspiracy Theory video on what I think is coming up for the game, and it's just, what you know, my predictions. But anyways guys, I appreciate it so much. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.